Before you begin painting, your canvas should have everything drawn in in pencil with the grid lines that you use to draw your mannequin fully erased. Otherwise, everything else should be planned out in pencil. You can darken things up if you're worried that they will get smudged, but you need outlines to go ahead and fill in with paint. First thing with painting is you should always paint from the back of the painting to the front. So think about what is furthest away in your painting and paint that first, not the tiny details that you're really excited about, but instead the background. In my painting, I want to have a blue fade into a green and fade into a yellow. So I'm starting by painting my blue. Second important tip to remember is choose the right brush for the job. If you're painting something large, like a background, use a big brush. However, around the edges of my mannequin, I want to make sure that I have a nice edge right up to my pencil line or even over my pencil line. So I'm getting my little brush in there to make sure everything is covered really nicely. The background in this project is yours to be creative with. You can choose whatever sort of design or style or scene you want obviously within reason, in order to help enhance your message and tell whatever story you're trying to sell in your painting. These paints can be pretty thin, so one advantage of that is I was able to paint right over some of my lettering that's going to be on top of the background because I know that I can see it through the paint, even if you can't necessarily in the video, in order to go back over it with black paint later on. However, the disadvantage of this paint being kind of thin is you can see my brush marks. Whenever possible, you should try to not leave brush marks showing. The easiest way to deal with brush marks, though, is to do a second layer of paint. So the best thing I could do would be to go back and actually do another layer of my blue to green to yellow fade so that you don't see any of my, my marks like you can see kind of in the blue at the top. As I continue on with the background, which you should always finish painting first before you paint the foreground, I'm going to go ahead and paint in my globe that my mannequin is holding. A few things to remember there is you want to make sure that you're not putting wet paint next to other areas of wet paint that you don't want them to blend together because that will definitely happen. So I would want to make sure that any paint around the area I'm about to paint is dry so that I don't smear the paints together and have it look messy when I intend it to look really clean and precise. Another thing to keep in mind is you need to always make sure that you cover up all the white dots of the canvas. So make sure you have plenty of paint on your brush, there's no shortage. And make sure you mix enough of a color so you don't have to go back and remix it ten times over so that you cover all of the canvas with your paint. This means you might have to work it into the little dots of the canvas, but I don't want to see any of the white texture of the canvas popping through the paint. Your goal is to paint that canvas and not to leave it showing. When you're ready to paint your mannequin, you want to treat it a lot like our tint and shade paint by number. So you should have your printout from the computer that you filtered in Photoshop and it should have either three, four, or five shades of gray in your printout. You may choose to paint your mannequin in shades of gray, or you may choose to paint it in tints and shades of a color like we practiced on the robot. If you're doing a color, your color should be one of the colors hopefully you chose in your brainstorm worksheet that makes sense for the message of your painting. I'm going to go ahead and just make mine shades of gray simply so that the blues and the greens in my um, earth-friendly message pop out more. 
That means I have three different grays from my printout. I need to mix up three different grays to paint my mannequin. However, don't mix all three at once because they will probably dry out by the time you finish just with one color. So I'm going to start with my lightest gray, paint it in following sort of the answer key of my printout in all the different shapes that I have penciled in and get all of my light gray shapes painted first before I try to work on any of the other shades of gray. Make sure you choose the right brush for the job once again. So if it's a tiny little area, get a brush with a tiny little tip. If it's not working out for you, it's not staying within the lines like you planned, try a different brush. Remember to be careful about painting new areas of wet paint next to other areas of paint that are still wet as well. So I'm going to restart at the top of my mannequin, leaving alone the freshest areas of paint and painting only the areas that I think are probably dry at this point. Remember, you want to choose the right brush for the job. So again, I'm using something that's got a nice point on it to do the edges of this shape even though it's a pretty large one and I can switch to a bigger brush for kind of the middle but I want to watch my edges to make sure it looks really crisp and nice. When I finish with the mannequin it's time to go ahead and do my final details. So I'm obviously not done with my globe, I'm not done with my mannequin, but if I were that would be the time that I would finally do my lettering. So make sure that your tiny details are saved for the very end and of course you want those to look good. So same piece of advice, choose the right brush for the job. If it's going to be a small piece of lettering, choose a very small little brush so that it comes out nice.